All right, we've got React up and running. We've got our .NET API set up. And so let's make them now work together. Now, I always have to come up with an example. Let me close this and I'll also stop it from running for now. Let's go back into Visual Studio. And one of the toughest things about these videos is trying to come up with these examples of what to use, uh, you know, for as we create these example programs. And the thing that's been on my mind is how much food flows through the Marriott School of Business at BYU. Uh, you know, when I'm in the elevators, there's vendors coming up, vendors coming down. On the seventh floor, there's always an event going on in, in you know, 40, uh, what is it, 4, 408, 410, always something going on. And, uh, you know, this thing and that thing and info sessions and, you know, merry at night and, and activities and, you know, department stuff. Anyway, tons and tons of food flowing through. So I've always felt like as a student, you could just live by going from info session to info session uh, <laughs> to different activities and whatnot. Um, anyway, it always cracks me up how much food runs through. So what my thought was is we'll create a little, uh, because uh, not all food is created equal, right? We'll create a little app that keeps track of you know, how good each event's food was. All right, so that's, that's my thought. Now, as we look at the folders here in .NET, we don't have a folder uh, for models like we've typically had in the past. And we don't use a models folder when we're doing an API. We could, we could call it models if we wanted to, but typically, because we're not using MVC anymore, then typically what we do is we create a folder called data which is probably a little more descriptive of what it holds. And so this is going to be our essentially our models folder. So in this data folder, I'm going to go in and create a new item. And this is going to be our class that's going to hold the information about a particular food that was served. And so I'm going to call this MarriottFood.cs. And in here, I'll go in and set up the data associated with that Marriott food. So I'll come in and say, public int and I'll, and the first thing I'll have is just a food ID, you know, a, a primary key to keep track of each row. And then I want to know what event was it? So I'll say public string and the event name. Okay. Uh, let's keep track of who the, who the vendor is, right? Who, who, what is the food? And so public string vendor gets set. And then I'm going to also keep track of my rating. So public, this is going to be an int, maybe like a, on a scale of 1 to 10, the food rating gets set. Okay. And then to build an instance of the Marriott food, I want all of these pieces of information. Each of them is required. And so I'll come into the food ID. I'll make this the key. Our event name is required. Our vendor is required. Our food rating is required. All right, so we've got that all set up, and this is how our object looks. Give me some warnings about not making it knowable, but that's okay. We're gonna make them required on the form. They're gonna get entered. Thanks for the warning, that's okay. All right, so we've got a, an, in, this is what a food is going to look like. It's gonna have an ID, and a, an event name, a vendor, and a rating, and that's for one, right? That's for one food. Okay, so we've got our, our template set up of what a food is going to look like and then we can put a bunch of food entries together in a table we'll call foods all right so that's uh, kind of step one here is getting this little model set up and then i probably recognize that in order to connect to the database i need a file that will act as the liaison to the database and so i'm going to come in here and say add new item and again, we don't need to name it something with context in it, but it sure helps us to find it when we're trying to look through all of our different models we have to find the context file if it has the word context in it. So I'm going to call this the food DB context. Usually we see these with either uh, just context, food context, or food DB context uh, would be a normal way of uh, creating this. So in this food DB context, I am going to inherit from the general db context. Now, it doesn't recognize that at first. 
And so we'll probably recall that there are some packages we need to install. And so typically we've done that through NuGet, um, the NuGet package manager, right? But I want to show you a, a different way of doing it just in case you like it better. And I think you might. So if I come into the full stack project and I open in terminal, I can run a command uh, to install those packages instead of doing it through NuGet. So I can say .NET add package, and then we say the name of the package. Well, if I can't remember any of the other ones, uh, Microsoft dot entity framework core. Entity framework core is database in the world of Microsoft. So entity framework EF. And so I can add that package. Now I probably want to match the version to whatever version of .NET I'm running. So I'm running .NET 8. Then I want to go get the most recent version of .NET 8, which I just looked and I've been doing it. So my most recent version is .NET 8.0.13. Let me show you real quick. So if I come in here uh, into the NuGet package manager and look, and I go search for Entity Framework Core, then if I go look at those most recent versions, the, the latest version in my case is 8.0.13. Okay, so when I install it, I want to tell it that I want version 8.0.13. All right, so I can install this through the NuGet package manager, enter, that installs that. Now you may think that's not very fast to go type that all out, probably NuGet's faster. But now that we want to get these other packages to be able to run migrations and use SQLite in that, if I've done it this way, then I can just come in and, and press the up arrow to get my history of commands. And I can just say, also I want, and I don't know why it does that, but if I resize the window, we get back to normal. I can say, oh, by the way, I also want the tools. Enter. It installs that package. Up arrow. Okay, I also want design. Enter. So you might be liking this a little bit better now. I also want dot SQLite. Enter. And it will install each of those packages. Okay, so we've got those installed. And I can check by saying .NET list package, which will show me all the packages that are installed. And I've got those four packages installed, plus this one I don't know about, swashbuckle ASP.NET.Core that has to do with APIs. All right, always a good idea after we've installed packages in .NET to save, close, and then reopen. And now when we go back to our DB context file in here, it doesn't recognize this, but now when I hover over it, light bulb, it says, hey, did you want to use Microsoft Entity Framework Core? And I do. So our food DB context file is going to inherit from the general DB context file. You might recall I need to set up the constructor, which it's going to just <laughs> volunteer to do for me. So we, we create a constructor, food DB context, same name as the class, and we, as uh, we set up this DB context file, then we're saying pass in the options that you want as we set this up, plus I'm gonna include the base options, the default options, right? And then I have to create a line to set up my table uh, in what's gonna be the database. Now again, it's trying to help me out here. And I can say, I want a set of, is it food? No, it's Marriott food. So I want a set of Marriott food. So Marriott food that I'm going to refer, refer to in the database as foods is what we're saying there. This is going to be a table in the database. So the row is going to look like this with each of those fields in each row. And then the table is going to look like that. All right, so I've got my context file set up. Um, just looking at the clock. I don't think I'm gonna finish this in this video. What do I do? Okay, let's finish up in the next video, uh, getting the rest set up and, and running my migrations. But this has to do with the, the models and the data. We need this model and then the context file.
Spencer out.